Okay, another brief video in my backyard. I'm gonna address the VL uh, DL issue um, just in a in a couple minutes. So it's uh, snowy today, um, as it has been. I'm actually just about to head to the airport, and I'm glad I have uh, both uh, all-wheel drive as well as winter tires. I wouldn't give up one for the other. This is sort of the basis in part for uh, my uh, plug for maintaining direct laryngoscopy skills. So really when we look at the issue, what we need to do is figure out what's the, what's the benchmark that we should have for first attempt success with direct laryngoscopy. And I think it's pretty clear based on two large studies, the um, recent uh, publication from the NEAR registry of over 17,000 intubations and as well as the Scottish study. And if you look at the first attempt success rate for DL, in those two studies, it was between 84 and 85 percent. So when we're looking at all the rest of the studies, we really need to compare to, to this benchmark, the large number of patients. But when you do look at all these studies comparing VL to DL, what you'll see clearly is that VL is superior to DL in all of these studies. But the, the VL first attempt success rate is still in the range of 75 to 77 percent. So less than the benchmark of historical data for first attempt success rate with direct laryngoscopy. And the more concerning issue is in all of these studies, comparing VL to DL, the DL first attempt success rate was anywhere from 40 percent to the mid-70s. And, and that's pretty appalling, and I think the mean is in the mid-60s, and you compare that to the benchmark uh, accepted first attempt success rate of 84 to 85%. What is very clear is that we are losing our skills in terms of direct laryngoscopy. So we can say, you know what, video laryngoscopy is clearly superior to bad direct laryngoscopy. But having bad direct laryngoscopy skills really isn't acceptable, no matter what anybody says. And this is the reason why, is that in upwards of 25% of cases, we're going to have to employ our plan B. In other words, our first attempt approach has failed, so we have to do our plan B approach. And the, the, the one technique that's been shown over and over again to rescue failed VL is direct laryngoscopy. And the problem is we're losing that skill. And I don't think that there's, that there's any reason that we should, uh, we should accept that. If we're going to own the airway, we need to own all the airway. So it's about uh, being good at whatever your plan A is, but you have to be equally good in your plan B as well as your, your plan C. You know, uh, the FAA report um, about uh, uh, um, the greatest risk to uh, air travel is our increasing dependence pilots increasing dependence on technology and, and automation. Um, I wouldn't uh, give up wearing a seatbelt because I have an airbag. We need to have redundancy in the system. Oh, we, need to have, uh, we need to be good at, at, at uh, multiple techniques to safely take care of our patients. Keep your DL skills. Make them better. Use VL or DL on your first attempt to approach. But whatever you do, be good at it.